Oh, the most meaningful for sure is being with the people um, and doing that through uh, having opportunities to uh, be involved with baptisms, Holy Communion, to see the people face to face, eye to eye, uh, to be at uh, some of the most intimate but yet uh, crucial parts of people's lives uh, when they're in crisis or when they're celebrating in joys. Um, to just be there and walk with them has, has been so meaningful for me. Many of the churches that I pastored were in their later years and um, in terms of the life of the church and as well as members. In my own personal theology and as a clergy, um, I believe that God's always putting opportunities before us, that God is always at work, and part of our job as the church is to come alongside and participate where God is offering those opportunities. And so an opportunity did come to this church uh, through Project Transformation, which is a literacy program for children. It had been a summer program um, and the church had a, um, a school within it, um, a charter school within it, so it seemed like a, a perfect fit for it. So I brought it to the church council and um, I'm thinking this is wonderful. And the response was, we just waxed the floors and painted the walls. And I took a deep breath and said a quick prayer and then I asked the question, Aren't these our children? Would we, have, would we be having these same concerns if these were our children? And aren't these our children? There was a transformation, there was a, a legacy, there was a future. Um, and they had a pattern then of continuing to say yes as they turned outside of themselves, you know, towards the community, um, being in ministry uh, in the world. Well, Kathy and I are incredibly grateful for all the appointments we've had. We spent the first half of our ministry serving local churches. I especially would acknowledge Christ Church Farmers Branch um, as they supported us and carried us through following a time of personal tragedy during those years. We've also been blessed to serve the second half of our ministry in the conference. We have had a, just a tremendous journey along the way. We're grateful for the opportunity to um, serve the Northwest District in our last uh, appointment. Uh, we're grateful to be a part of Bishop McKee's appointee cabinet. Uh, grateful for the opportunity to be out and about with all of the churches and pastors of the Northwest District. I've had the opportunity twice in my career to baptize preemies just after they were born and just before they died. And the first time that happened, the father of this little girl, uh, through his tears after uh, the the service was over, came up and shook my hand and said, um, thanks, this was important. Now, that statement haunted me for a long time. And when I finally realized what he was saying to me, it profoundly changed how I view baptism, profoundly. when uh, the ordinands will have their, the bishop's hands laid on their heads, take that authority. But you already have that authority. And, um, and not to be afraid to venture out into the world, into uh, the community in which you are sent. Which is, we're not just sent to the church, we are sent to a community. We are sent to serve the world. Uh, the church is not a self-service um, entity, though we sometimes fall into that trap. But I think the challenge of the church um, and the authority of the, of the clergy is to help us grow in discipleship that we actually then turn outwards uh, to the world and to the community. The world is our parish and that um, everywhere we turn there is opportunities for being in ministry. Uh, take your days off and your vacation because you need a break from the people and the people need a break from you. And so it's important for you as an ordinant to carve out your time to carve your days out, uh, days off, uh, to be able to uh, take your vacations, do it. Treat it as holy time so that everything else works around that. It's good for the soul. Remember, the pulpit is not yours, it's God's, and share it. You'll always err on the side of grace in all situations. 
And then lastly, the most important as far as I'm concerned is try to remember when you meet with someone, especially as a pastor, that you are standing on holy ground. You don't know their story and that you take your shoes off and listen. Be yourself. Um, live out the calling that you have. If, uh, you know, this is the greatest job in the world, and if in fact God has called you to the ministry, you can't be happy and fulfilled doing anything else. Exercise your gifts. But remember, as you do, that it's not about you. It's about God working through you, and that makes all the difference. Uh, remember the partnership with your families. Um, Kathy and I and our children have been partners all along the journey. And while it's been different at different points in that journey, um, we've still been incredible partners. And I would hope and pray the same for uh, those entering ordinance as well. There's always a tension in, in a church or in the annual conference uh, between what is historical, what is doctrinally correct, and what is pastoral. And, and I hope that as I look back on my career, and as people look back on my service, that they would say, he was a pastor first. I don't think God's finished with us yet. Um, I think that um, we live in an incredibly fertile mission field. God still needs us to be the hands and feet of Christ in that mission field. Um, my hope and prayer is that we will do that by um, keeping the main thing the main thing and focusing on our mission to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. And that as we do that, God will in fact be able to to work in and through us uh, to advance his kingdom um, as um, we're called to do. What I would like to say to the um, North Texas Conference is to, to be the agent of hospitality, of openness, inclusiveness, um, of love, of light, uh, that in all that we do is that we try to embody being the body of Christ and I think that you know the love of God, love of Christ, and the Holy Spirit is what our basic tenets are. Um, and that love is the intrinsic value of what we offer to the world. And if we hold to that, the rest will fall away and fall in its proper place. Uh, I think the first thing would be a prayer for unity. Um, there is uh, so much disparage and. Uh, sometimes even a sense of destruction with regards to the gospel of Jesus Christ. And uh, I'm reminded that the scripture tells us that they will know us by our love, but sometimes I wonder if the world really knows us by our love for Christ, because I don't think we do. I really do believe that uh, the word of God is, uh, and the Bible is primary in the United Methodist Church, and we should treat it as such and that uh, we remember that within the Bible is really what I would see as the foundation of life, which is the, the great commandment to love, not only God, but love one another, the great requirement to uh, seek justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with our God, and then thirdly, the great commission, which is based in our mission as the United Methodist Church. We're, we're the creation story where God looks at creation and says, it's good until we're created. And he says, we are very good. I don't read in there any caveats that some of us are not as good as others. We are all filled with the breath of life and we are all created in God's image and the church should be open to all of us because we are all part of God's very good triumph of creation.